They call you the MIG still? They still call you the MIG? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot easier than saying Migliori. This, so, MIG. this is a this is a this is a guy who t is two years out of his retirement and retains an encyclopedic memory of every bad beat that he's ever had. <laughs> It's true, though. You remember no, races as well as anyone. I remember the ones I got beat more than the ones I won. It's always the ones that got away that bothered is, me. Is, is that your competitive nature, though, that you just held on to that and you maybe still play them over in your head? Yeah, well, I would get beat a nose in a race, and that night I would I would go home and watch race films until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because I, I knew in my heart there was something I could have done different. So, yeah, those don't leave you. Five Kentucky Derby rides. What was your best finish? I uh, finished fifth on wheel away in the uh, 2000 Derby. I actually took the lead at the eighth pole, and then just as soon as I had that moment of thinking I might have a chance to win, Fusaichi Pegasus blew by us. Oh, and, yeah. And that was that. Well, that, that, that was to Sormo on Fusaichi Pegasus. He rode the, wa the rail the whole way, and then he just exploded yeah, off the He followed away. me the whole way. He did. Well, that's yeah. not fair <laughs> drafting up on you. They have drafting like stock car racing, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was live cover. <laughs> so, I mean, so what's that feel like when you hit the lead in the Kentucky Derby? I've won a lot of, I had won a lot of big races in my career up to that point, but I never had my face start to tingle the way it started to tingle at the eighth pole in that derby. And, and then that quickly, the tingle went away. <laughs> <laughs> and usually it's a tingle from dirt getting kicked in your face and not actually being on the lead no, this in the was, Kentucky Derby. This was from being 200 yards away from the Holy Grail. I was at your retirement announcement at Belmont Park. I think you were still in a neck brace yes. when you did it. For me, as a, I, I, I'm a pretty emotional person. I cried at Hitch when, when Will Smith was knocking on the door trying to get I'm crying in the theater. I'm like, I'm crying. So I was pretty choked up when you, when you had the announcement because you clearly loved riding as much as anyone who's ever, who's ever ridden. How, how, I, yes, we're two years on, but you've transitioned really well into the media world. Tell us how that's been for you. Is it, and is it really tough because the media world that you've transitioned into is still racing and you're there and you're watching it? Yeah, there, there are days it's tough. I mean, I, I, I still miss it very much. I thought, you know, at some stage it would get easier, and it hasn't yet. Um, but it's important for me to be involved in racing. I love horses, and I love thoroughbred racing. And I've been given great opportunities by wonderful people. Amy Zimmerman, Steve Nagler at HRTV gave me an opportunity to work with them. Uh, Charlie Haywood and PJ Campo to work with Naira. Um, so it keeps me involved and close to the sport I love, and uh, hopefully, I can give a little bit back to the game that gave me everything. Let's talk about the Derby a little yes. bit. Well, a horse that really hadn't made uh, an impression on me one way or the other really was Daddy Knows Best, and then watching him train for the last week, I, to me, he's been the horse of the week. I think he's wow. a horse that's just um, really doing well at the right time, and uh, I think both of Asmussen's horses, Sabercat as well, are doing well, but I'd have to give a slight edge to Daddy Knows Best. Well, Daddy Knows Best has been one of my two. I've, I've, you know, everybody has tried to talk me off of him, but I've stuck really strong with Bodie Meister, and there's nothing wrong with his impressions that he gives out in the morning that he's not doing well. So I, I, I like those two, but, the, you know, Bodie Meister really devastated and dominated in the Arkansas Derby, and so if you kind of take him out of the equation and then go back and look at Sabercat, you go, you know, this horse ran okay, and it's obviously just a prep race leading up to this. Well, and you know, you go back to the um, Arkansas Derby that a fleet Alex you know, demolished the field, and he came here and he ran a good third, but I always thought that race might have affected him a little mm. bit, and then he rebounded to win the Preakness in, in stunning fashion when he was nearly dropped, and then um, one of the most dominant Bel Belmont winners since Risen Star, Absolutely. and point given. I mean, his Belmont was, was tremendous. Um, and I just wonder if Bodie Meister not having races two year olds going to react off of that, that big win in Arkansas. Now, he's, his breezes here were terrific. His gallops, he's not a horse that looks good going slow. He looks great going fast, but going slow, you wouldn't pick him out of a crowd. Yeah, okay, okay. See, this is exactly what I hate. I, I mean, I expect like this really fun conversation. I'm going to go to sleep tonight going, you know. It's three o'clock in the morning. Meg said, you know, and it's like, all of a sudden I'm gonna be like having my doubts. Well, You're just another guy well, trying to so you chisel rest, and crack open so my you shell sleep here. sleep better. I hated Nero last year and he ran second. I so, hated Nero and he blew my triple all up. Right, so, so, so you can sleep better. I'm just one more opinion in a sea of many opinions. Yeah, but you're. But I, I give you a lot of credit. All right. Anyway, Richard Migliore, I hope you have a good rest of the week. Thanks for coming out and joining us at Kentucky Confidential. My, my pleasure.